uh, good evening students today we are uh, going to do on uh, pediatric pneumonia followed by uh, asthma so it's a very good uh, topic from uh, uh, respiratory case uh, point of view i will try to be as concise as possible and followed by the important questions that might come okay so to start with uh, manju one year old uh, one month old female child resident of uh, sadar bazar delhi so the first will be your uh, demographics of which age is important i will come to the later on depending upon the age the type of uh, organism will vary so this is the age group uh, where viral infections are very common up to 5 years okay 6 months to 6 years you have more viral infections common informant make sure the mother is giving a reliable uh, make sure mother is giving the history so it's going to be reliable and try to use the patient's own words okay patient presenting with complaints of fever and cough since 6 days and uh, fast breathing since 4 days reduced oral intake since 1 day and, and increased irritability since 1 day so use patient words don't use technical words like uh, tachypnea similarly the words like dyspnea which is a patient's own awareness for a 1 year old child it's not possible so patient's own awareness all you don't try to use okay and uh, coming to the history of presenting illness child was apparently well 6 days ago when she developed a fever the temperature was recorded uh, 102 to 103 fever fahrenheit fever not uh, was not associated with chills and rigors there was no rash no diurnal variation and uh, somewhat relieved with medications like antipyretics and child well in between episodes okay i'll keep reading the presenting complaints fully cough was wet as there was some sounds noticed by the parents non paroxysmal non spasmodic no diurnal variations no aggravating factors and not associated with any post passive vomiting cough was still uh, persisting in spite of medicines taking medications child has fast breathing for the past 4 days and increasing but uh, no chest re retractions according to the mother and not relieved promptly by medicines no history of worsening with the uh, feeding the fast breathing no suck rest suck cycle no forehead sweating history of noisy breathing present but not able to characterize mother is not able to characterize the noisy breathing residues to oral acceptance and increased irritability since one day so here uh, chills chills is something which is subjective don't try to use that in this uh, uh, presenting complaint so chills will not come uh, rigors may be present and the presence of fever suggests that there is probably some infection or at least some inflammation is going on and if there is any rash it could be a viral uh, fever because viral infections are common so try to elicit history of a viral rash and try to characterize if it is not measles you have the maculopapular rash coming from the head to foot with conjunctivitis make sure it's not a measles rash because the pneumonia staph pneumonia is very common with uh, measles and uh, it usually it cannot be an asthma because usually asthma will be afebrile and coming to cough the gurgling sound wet cough or dry cough you can differentiate and remember children uh, up to 5 years do not expectorate they swallow the sputum followed by vomiting so the post tussive vomiting or the post cough vomiting is an equivalent to productive cough so if the child keeps on vomiting often with cough and whatever vomit is mucoid it is an equivalent to expectoration diurnal variation very often uh, we talk about diurnal variation if it is nocturnal probably it is asthma where you have diurnal variation and um, paroxysmal event here it is non paroxysmal paroxysmal means sudden sudden event in a child they try to ask you because they want that it could be a foreign body they want you to tell that it could be a foreign body and regarding fast breathing remember the moment there is fast breathing instead of the u uri it has gone to the lower airway involvement okay so there can be running nose which is probably upper airway but once you have fever running nose cough and fast breathing fast breathing then the lower airway especially the parenchyma is involved and also you should remember that always not always fast breathing is equivalent to respiratory tract 
they will ask you the differential diagnosis. It could be a respiratory, it could be a cardiac, it could be metabolic acidosis, it could be raised ICT resulting in hyperventilation. And sometimes uh, very uh, trivial causes like fever can cause uh, tachypnea or fast breathing. Even in nasal block, children breathe through the nose, uh, small babies breathe through the nose. So nasal block itself causes respiratory distress. And regarding noisy breathing, they might attempt to ask you, sometimes you can have audible noises. It could be a strider. Uh, they might ask you, what is it? It's a inspiratory sound, strider, due to uh, laryngeal involvement, strider. Okay. Wheeze, it's uh, an expiratory noise, audible for, by the parents. Okay. It's an expiratory phenomenon, wheeze. And sometimes grunting, where the baby breathes against a closed glottis, to prevent collapse of the alveoli. They expect you to tell these words. What is grunting? Grunting is the noise produced when the baby breathes out against a closed glottis to prevent the alveoli from collapsing. So that is grunting, which is suggestive of parenchymal lesion. Okay. And the reduced oral acceptance we have asked because we need to understand whether it is severe enough needing hospitalization or not. Okay. And after the presenting illness, you should be able to say that it is an acute onset infection. It is an infection because fever is there. Acute onset, less than a week duration. And probably because of the fast breathing, the lower respiratory tract is involved. Okay. And uh, it's does it deserve hospitalization? Yes, the, there is a severity is high. Uh, reduced oral acceptance is there and irritable. Child is also irritable. Okay. And coming to the negative history. Uh, no history of running nose, ear pain, and ear discharge. No history of loose stools, vomiting, abdominal pain, and rash. Here, why we are asking? Because we want to differentiate viral infection from the bacterial infection. Viral infection usually is multi-systemic. So, it, it involves the upper respiratory tract infection, which includes running nose. It can even involve the ear discharge, ear pain. And also, it, will, it can involve the GI system. So, loose stools, vomiting, abdominal pain. So, it can involve the multisystemic. Okay. And uh, viral often can present with some sort of rash. Especially, remember the measles rash. Because uh, the pneumonia, which is going to be serious type, if, the, if it's going to be measles rash. Okay. The staph pneumonia is going to be very serious enough. No history of failure to gain weight or uh, there is any weight loss. So, not only weight loss. Failure to gain weight is also important. No evening rise in temperature. Because uh, if there is a fever history of more than two weeks, so here it's only six days, more than two weeks, along with respiratory symptoms, along with maybe an history of not gaining weight, uh, we should suspect tuberculosis here. They will always, in the respiratory case, they will always come back to tuberculosis. So when will you suspect tuberculosis? So it's going to be a longer duration of fever plus respiratory symptoms, plus this uh, not only weight loss, 5% weight loss, even failure to gain weight is also important. Okay. Okay. And uh, no history of cyanosis, lethargy, altered sensorium, convulsions, vomiting, lethargy. Okay. So here, these are all symptoms suggestive of complication. Okay. So the pneumonia is severe enough to cause cyanosis. The, there is a lot of hypoxemia and carbon dioxide. So resulting in lethargy, altered sensorium and convulsions or the infection has passed on to cause meningitis and septicemia okay so you have to ask questions related to complications in the negative history coming to history of care no history of any previous nebulization or hospitalization in the past no history of earlier treatment no history of any form of allergies in the past it could be skin allergies or uh, food allergies okay uh, why these recurrent episodes are asked? Because uh, uh, very important is the asthma. It is characterized by recurrent episodes of respiratory symptoms as well as uh, cough requiring nebulization, which Madam will be explaining later on in the other case. Also, recurrent episodes of cough with fast breathing, needing hospitalization, suggestive of uh, real pneumonitis, recurrent pneumonias. Always think in terms of cystic fibrosis, immunodeficiency, or sometimes congenital heart disease like VSDs, or if the child is a CP or any uh, anatomical malformation like tracheoesophageal fistula is there. So aspiration is common, causing recurrent LRA. So whenever a child has two episodes in six months or more than three episodes for the whole lifetime, we call that as recurrent episodes. Okay. 
and uh, spacer history try to ask in the past history regarding the treatment also in treatment history whether spacer was used whether any preventive treatment was used or not then comes history of contact with uh, tb there is no history of contact with uh, uh, any person with tuberculosis very important in respiratory case and uh, you need to understand that um, uh, in the reason two years they ask about contact history in the reason two years anybody had any tb they don't come up with uh, straight away uh, they had tb you have to ask whether any family member with chronic cough whether anyone died due to respiratory symptoms and it doesn't stop with household contacts close contacts so even here the child is one year so even if a child goes to school so even in the school also close contacts is important with tb definition in the last two years okay and treatment history prior to admission oral medications were given after admission iv fluids and some medications probably antibiotics have been given so here the history is important because to choose the antibiotics if recently oral medication given and child is not responding maybe we have to step up the antibiotics okay and coming to antenatal history it has been uh, it's uh, not much important so just say uneventful and it was a book case and uh, immunized mother was immunized make sure that proper care was given antenatally and it was uneventful and finally in the natal history it's going to be a, a full uh, full term normal vaginal delivery 3 kg immediately cried after birth and make sure that everything went normal so no nico admission and breastfeeding was started within half an hour that says that everything was fine okay and postnatal history was also uneventful if any jaundice was there for any phototherapy was given anything you have to mention that otherwise no need to elaborate as in cerebral palsy where we elaborate in first trimester second trimester third trimester okay okay coming to the nutrition history so uh, any pediatric case try to uh, uh take your nutrition history development history immunization history in detail okay child was breastfed till 1 year exclusively breastfed for uh, uh here 8 months okay then semi solids were introduced and child was breastfed till 1 year after that they have stopped breastfeeding and at present the child consumes about 650 calories and around 15 grams of protein as against the expected 1000 calories and 20 grams requirement so you can even give a deficit how much is the deficit so that would be nice okay so the nutritional history is important suppose breastfeeding is also going you just say in addition to 60 650 calories and 15 grams of protein child is also taking breastfeeding okay and immunization history make sure uh, the major vaccines have been given or not so child has received dpt hepatitis b polio drops and measles vaccine at appropriate age the mother may not come up with this but as per national immunization schedule you can even say like that as per national immunization schedule the child has been given vaccination and the last vaccination was given at 9 uh, months of age so it is understood that they have given all these vaccines and nowadays uh, in national immunization schedule itself the rotavirus is also given and in some places uh, pneumococcal is also given and recently pneumococcal has been made mandatory for all over india it's going to come very soon okay and uh, what uh, they might ask you about questions about related to pneumonia so one is bcg vaccine definitely they will ask you about bcg vaccination and uh, the most important question they will ask is if the child has been bcg vaccinated so will the child not get tb so the answer is no they will get tb because bcg protects doesn't protect from all forms of tb only mainly the severe forms of tb it protects so the uh, the mild uh, pulmonary tuberculosis all it may not protect it protects mainly against the miliary forms meningeal forms of tuberculosis then they will uh, ask you about uh, the importance of pneumococcal vaccine the schedule h influenza vaccine measles vaccine and sometimes they might even ask about the influenza vaccine so keep that with uh, the schedule and route etc then developmental assessment child is able to stand without uh, support and trying to walk able to speak three words wave bye bye play speak do again so whatever at this age child is doing you just tell those milestones and say that the child's development is appropriate for age okay 
In family history, the child is born out of non-consanguineous marriage, no history of similar complaints in siblings or parents, no history of asthma, allergy or tuberculosis in the family. Make sure that uh, there is no family history, make sure that everything is fine or if they are suffering from anything you just mentioned, especially the allergies run in families, okay. Socioeconomic history, very important. Uh, so here lives in a Paka house and belongs to lower middle socioeconomic status according to the modified Kupusami scale. Uh, main important is consider about overcrowding. Is there overcrowding present? Suppose you have more than three persons, family persons uh, for two room, it's considered overcrowding. More than five for a three room, then it is overcrowding, okay? Uh, and uh, here overcrowding is present and father smokes at home. He's a smoker. So children are exposed to passive smoking. That is also a risk factor. And mother is a housewife and father works in a shop as salesman. Mother's literature is fifth grade and father 10. So the education status is very important. So they might not be so aware and you have to give a lot of education and counseling to follow the uh, complaints with treatment. Okay. So the summary of the history is uh, here is a one year and one month old uh, female child resident of uh, Sadar Bazaar, Delhi presented with a short one week history of fever, cough, fast breathing without coreza and uh, reduced oral acceptance and increased irritability. Okay. There is no history of similar complaints in the past, no history of nebulization and no history of recurrent infections in the past. Analysis is a uh, child presented. So this uh, they might ask you, what do you infer from it? So I infer that it is probably a respiratory tract infection. It is an infection and probably it is a lower respiratory tract infection in view of the faster breathing. And it's a short uh, acute uh, history. So infection is the etiology. And since there is no viral prodrome, there is no such as coryza or rash or diarrhea, etc. The uh, viral disease is unlikely. It look, It doesn't look like a viral disease okay so the my provisional diagnosis is a lower respiratory tract infection okay and probably it could be pneumonia bronchopneumonia pneumonia or bronchopneumonia either of it and sometimes complications like pleural effusion also could be there so i would like to even exclude complications and i would like to examine the respiratory system so that will be your provisional diagnosis and coming to the examination child is uh, conscious irritable and not comfortable very important whether the child is comfortable or not okay whether the child is irritable irritable is a sign of hypoxemia so make sure that the child is comfortable not having any distress okay otherwise you mention it then comes the vitals so respiratory rate is uh, 68 per minute and it is abdominal thoracic and there are subcostal retractions present but no flaring of alanisi no accessory muscles in the neck are involved and there is no head bobbing very important to know how severe is the respiratory problem so you here they will ask you about the imnc criteria for fast breathing okay so less than two months so more than 60 is tachypnea two months to one year more than 50 per minute is tachypnea and more than one year more than 40 is considered as tachypnea so any tachypnea as per IMNC is pneumonia. Retractions, then it's going to be pneumonia. So here subcostal retractions are there. So it's going to be severe pneumonia. And if there is going to be flaring of alanisi, accessory muscles are involved and even head bobbing is there, then the pneumonia is very uh, serious sort of infection, might need immediate uh, ICU admission. Okay. And the pulse rate is 110 per minute. Pulse is regular, rhythmic, good volume, no radio radial or radio femoral delay. And uh, CRT, very important. It's less than three seconds. So the child is not in shock and remember all these uh, parameters may vary because of the fever itself so here fever is uh, one or two so for every one degree rise in temperature they will ask you four rr will increase and 10 pulse rate will increase so you have to subtract for that so here three fours are 12 so even if we subtract 12 from this still it will fit with the tachypnea criteria okay and coming to the anthropometry, very important uh, for less than five years, we are going to use the WHO growth charts more than that IAP growth charts. You have to give your interpretation. So here weight is eight kg. So it is just above the third centile. For a one year, we want at least nine kg plus. So it is just greater than third centile. So it is just above the criteria for undernutrition or else we would call the child as undernutrition. 
then height 76 cm so it is around the 50th centile so it is normal otherwise we would uh, put under stunting less than third centile stunting and head circumference it is in the third to 50th centile so it is normal and weight for height very important weight for height uh, it is between the first and the third centile so it is uh, below the third centile so it falls under the moderate acute malnutrition if less than one centile then it is severe acute malnutrition so here it is moderate acute malnutrition so which means recently there has been some problem with the feeding issues so in addition to the all the treatment at the end while discharge you have to also address the nutrition issues also okay and this is also 11 to 12.5 cm so about 12.5 is uh, about 13.5 is fine so here 11 to 12.5 so it also suggests that it is moderate acute malnutrition less than 11 is going to be severe acute malnutrition okay so use the who grow charts to tell your interpretation then head to foot examination so ictus paler cyanosis so here mild paler is there no cyanosis which means uh, because of the respiratory distress the cyanosis has not developed otherwise it's going to be a serious uh, issue requiring intensive care uh, no ictus, no lymphadenopathy, especially for tuberculosis, lymphadenopathy is important. No clubbing, no edema. Clubbing suggests that uh, it, there is a long-standing severe disease, especially suppose uh, you have a bronchic thesis, you get clubbing. And cyanosis, if the disease is going to be severe, you are going to get cyanosis. And in addition to this, from head to foot, all the vitamin deficiencies you try to tell about that no signs of vitamin deficiency and related to the respiratory system the ears are important no discharge from the ears mouth is important how is the throat and tonsils and is there any cleft lip or cleft palate because that can cause aspiration dentitions are fine make sure that you talk about the bcg mark the bcg mark is present and uh, and uh, the BCG mark uh, gives protection from severe forms, which we have already told. Sometimes Mantu mark might be there in the arm, where you have to look into the induration, not the erythema. More than 10 millimeter is considered a significant. It only suggests that the child has been exposed to prior to TB bacilli. Okay. Okay. Coming to the respiratory system examination, very important part here. Wait a minute. Uh, so, you start with nose. Do not straight away go with uh, inspection. Start with the upper airway. Nose is normal. No flaring of the alanesi. Then go to the oral cavity. Oral cavity and throat tonsils are normal. Inspection. Start with the trachea. Trachea is in the midline. The apical impulse you have to talk about. And the chest shape is uh, circular or normal in shape. There is no use of uh, accessory muscles but some subcostal recessions are present. No nasal flaring is present. And no scars, sinuses or veins over the chest seen. Apical impulse I am not able to make out in the inspection. Okay. Then uh, finally, you look into the movements. Movements appear decreased on the right side. Okay. So this will be your inspection. You can also comment uh, in the spine also from the looking at the back. How is the back? Any typhoscoliosis is there or not? Then comes to the palpation where you are going to confirm about the tracheal and the apical impulse. Okay, we need to show there is no mediastinal shift. Okay, so apical impulse is in the fourth intercostal space along the midclavicular line. Usually for children, it's going to be in the fourth intercostal space. Then trachea is in the midline. Okay, and uh, chest expansion is decreased on the right side. So you are going to confirm by the palpatory method that the chest expansion is decreased on the right side. And you look into the vocal frameters, uh, you cannot ask the child, so it may not be done. And anyhow, in auscultation, you are going to confirm with vocal resonance. So, vocal frameters could not be done, you can say no issues. Then on percussion, uh, the note is impaired or dull over the right mammary, right infra axillary and right infra scapular areas. Okay, so there is a dullness, impaired dullness. It's not stony dull, it's impaired dullness over the right mammary right infra axillary and the right infra scapular areas and the cardiac apex is normally placed okay cardiac uh, apex is normally placed in the fourth intercostal space along the mid clavicular line on auscultation i am able to make out first you talk about the bronchial breath sounds if any on the right mammary right axillary and the right interscapular areas occasional crepitations are also present no other added sounds 
and vocal resonance is increased in the those areas vocal resonance is increased so bronchial breath sounds are heard some crepitations are made out no other added sounds are there and vocal resonance is also increased in the same areas so coming to uh, one by one so apical impulse and tracheal position is very important as i already said it says that the medial there is no mediastinal shift if there is going to be a pneumothorax or a pleural effusion the apical impulse and tracheal position is automatically going to shift to the opposite side okay and trail sign uh, uh, suggest it's nothing but what is trail sign so the stenocleidomastoid mastoid looks prominent on the side where the trachea moves so that is trail sign so it's an inspectory finding okay and uh, this uh, severe pneumonia and uh, very severe pneumonia on inspection you try to make sure the accessory muscles the nasal flaring the head bobbing is there or not so these things suggest that it's not just a pneumonia pneumonia means only the fast breathing once the other things like this uh, retractions are there subcostal retractions nasal flaring head bobbing which suggests a severe pneumonia okay and the child needs immediate intensive care management and decreased movement on the right side whenever movement is decreased on one side the pathology is on that side so remember that whenever you talk about movements decreased on one side it means that the pathology is on that side always okay and uh, the chest expansion is uh, decreased here and uh, with regards to consolidation remember this is a all the findings which you have told is suggestive of consolidation or pneumonia which will have a dull note on percussion it's going to be dull note and your vocal resonance and vocal fremitus is going to be increased and you are going to get bronchial breath sounds in the uh, consolidation but with regards to pleural effusion where it's going to be stony dull on percussion it's going to be stony dull on percussion remember it's like a curtain it's like a curtain pleural effusion or pneumothorax it's like a curtain in the pleura and nothing is going to be heard so your breath sounds are going to be diminished the vocal resonance vocal fremitus is going to be decreased in pleural effusion and pneumothorax but on percussion in pleural effusion it's going to be stony dull and in pneumothorax it's going to be hyper resonant okay so remember the differences and in bronchopneumonia it's like a diffuse bilateral involvement so you will be hearing in addition to the crepitations wheezes also will be in, in involved because the bronchus is involved and it is going to be a diffuse so both the lungs you will have findings it will not be localized to one side so ronchi will be there so these are the important findings in addition to the abdominal examination is normal as abdomen is soft with uh, no tenderness no organomegaly sometimes liver can be palpable especially where you have a hyperinflated uh, chest so you can have some amount of liver being palpable cardiovascular system examination is normal as s1 s2 is uh, heard normal and no murmurs are there and central nervous system revealed that the, except for the irritability otherwise everything is fine and make sure that there are no meningeal signs because sometimes the pneumonia can spread causing meningitis okay so the summary of the findings are here is manju one year old uh, female child presented with fever cough and fast breathing for the past 4 to 6 days with no contact history for tuberculosis on physical examination there is fever tachypnea with subcostal retractions decreased movements on the right side along with dullness on percussion on the right lower chest region infra axillary and infra scapular areas and bronchial breathing on the right side and occasional crepitations are seen so my provisional diagnosis it's a lower respiratory tract infection probably severe right lower severe right lobar pneumonia etiology probably being streptococcus pneumonia with moderate acute malnutrition okay sometimes maybe you may not uh, say exact etiology they might be offended you can just stop with lower respiratory tract infection probably it is a right lobar pneumonia with moderate acute malnutrition and as per imnca criteria you can say that it is uh, severe pneumonia okay so investigations what investigations you are going to do cbc peripheral smear crp and blood culture but blood culture you may not get so much yield and cbc you will have a neutrophilic predominant leukocytosis okay and uh, peripheral smear might show the toxic granules suggestive of bacterial infection crp may be elevated but blood culture yield is low and the chest x-ray chest x-ray will show the air bronchogram 
and if uh, pleural effusion is there obliteration of the costophrenic angles can be seen mantu test is one important test to rule out the uh, prior exposure to the tb bacilli so remember the induration is important not the erythema and the horizontally you have to check whether it is more than 10 mm and if possible if sputum is there if uh, then you can uh, do the gram staining and the culture most important investigation coming to the important discussion points uh, very important in respiratory they will ask you this imnc flow chart remember this imnc flow chart uh, understand the general danger signs is the child able to drink or breastfeed it does the child vomit everything out and does the child have convulsions and is the child lethargic or unconscious if anything is there any danger sign is there automatically it's going to become a very severe disease pink category and immediate referral okay so these are the danger signs pink category immediately refer urgently to the hospital then you uh, count the breaths for 1 minute and look for any chest in drawing see whether any strider is there and as per the imnc criteria i said for 2 months to 12 months it's going to be 50 breaths per minute and for 12 months up to 5 years it's going to be 40 breaths per minute for the tachypnea so if any fast breathing is there it's going to be pneumonia give amoxicillin for 5 days if there is going to be fast breathing plus chest in drawing or strider then it's going to be severe pneumonia if there is going to be general danger sign also then it's going to be very severe disease so give an injectable and immediately refer urgently to the hospital okay and uh, some questions about community acquired pneumonia hospitalization so remember uh, if just fast breathing is not enough there need to be a uh, lot of retractions and accessory muscle involvement uh, head bobbing alan si flaring grunting and lethargy and shock these are all suggest the indication for hospitalization or very poor intake then spo2 saturation pulse ox if available spo2 if the saturation is less than 92 percentage of rumen then it is also indication for hospitalization important etiological agents remember bacteria is going to be streptococcus pneumoniae staph aureus and h influenza h influenza has become rare because of the vaccination pneumococcal vaccination if you have taken the pneumonia is also going to be a bit less incident staph aureus yes it's always there in the especially when there is empyema um the empyema pus then it is staph aureus and uh, viruses very common etiology especially in the 6 months to 6 years rsv influenza and para influenza and more than 5 years school going children atypical organisms like mycoplasma and chlamydia remember that staph aureus speciality is remember empyema remember staph aureus nematocils remember staph aureus and as a complication for measles you get staph aureus h influenza very common for less than 3 years and that also because of the immunization it has come down an atypical organism speciality is uh, they have few physical signs it's called walking pneumonia they will be comfortable but once you take the chest x ray you realize that there is a huge uh, bronco pneumonia so atypical organisms few physical signs on loan will be there treatment oxygen iv fluids and nebulization if wheeze is there go for a nebulization or antibiotics antibiotics do not say any high five antibiotics it's going to be amoxicillin or cotrimoxazole for 5 days and if you suspect staph then you can add amoxiclav or amoxicillin plus cloxacillin if the child needs admission still it's going to be iv ampicillin or iv amoxis amoxiclav if staph you suspect it's going to be amoxiclav or cloxacillin still not responding then only go for the third generation cephalosporin don't go straight away for ceftriaxone coming to tuberculosis discussion points now it's not rntcp it is now called ntep national tb elimination program okay previously it was only smear microscopy for afb so sputum you do microscopy for acid fast bacilli but now we have moved on to molecular methods so you have to tell all this rapid nucleic acid amplification test nat so rapid nna cct so two hours you are going to get the report so it can be true nat or gene expert it's a higher sensitivity than your just near microscopy and one advantage is rifampin resistance will also be said in that itself okay and nowadays we also do if rifampin resistance is seen or if the patient comes uh, after uh, discontinuing uh, defaulter 
then you can also do the line probe assays to test for rifampicin inh and other second line drug resistance so now here is a possibility where you get the values for resistance very easily so there is no need to have a separate category for defaulter so now as per ntp there is only one category okay uh, that i will tell so so the now the mandatory is nucleic acid amplification test that is gene expert or trinet for every patient where a biological specimen can be produced so if there is a biological specimen you have to submit for nat so universal drug sensitivity testing so once nat is applied since rifampin resistance is automatically part of nat so universal drug sensitivity testing is also being done and daily drugs previously it was alternate day drugs now it's daily drugs with fixed dose combination for children so it's going to be a fixed dose there is no uh, weight per kg basis uh, kg per day basis it's going to be a fixed drug dose uh, and you have six weight bands if the child falls in that weight band that fixed dose combination is going to be given and the dosage remember hrze okay for 2 months followed by hre for 4 months previously when you we used to read there was no ethambutol so now for maintenance hre is also being given for 4 months plus they suggest to add pyridoxin because of the inh neurotoxicity so 10 mg per day pyridoxin can be given and for preventive treatment suppose there is a family member who has household contact has tb on treatment you have to give for a child less than 5 years uh first find out that there is no tb in the child and give inh 10 mg per kg per day for 6 months so that is the preventive therapy so this flow chart uh, not me uh, not remember fully so you need to know when will you suspect tuberculosis so persistent fever for more than 2 weeks very important so the fever should be more than 2 weeks if the cough may not may or may not be present for 2 weeks weight loss of 5% may or may not be present or failure to gain weight for the past 3 months these are all extra but most important will be fever should be present for more than 2 weeks to suspect tb along with maybe cough may be present for 2 weeks weight loss may be present of 5% or the child is not gaining weight for the past 3 months despite adequate nutrition and with or without contact still contact may or may not be present and the first step is do a chest x ray if chest x ray is suggestive of tb then go for the nat go for the true nat or gene expert if nat is positive straight away start the treatment if there is non specific shadows not suggestive of tb then give a course of antibiotics then again check the chest x ray still it persists then again you submit for nat if nat come positive then give the att so this is the protocol for tb and uh, for remember since you are in the covid era they will definitely ask some questions about uh, covid 19 in children so covid 19 is the disease caused by the virus uh, sars uh, coronavirus 2 uh, it doesn't affect much the children it's going to be mild infection most often it might affect the immunosuppressed kids presentation will be just like any other viral infection they present with cough fever gastrointestinal symptoms running nose sore throat nasal congestion rash conjunctivitis loss of smell it's just like any other viral infection viral uri and uh, in during the time of uh, pandemic you have to suspect that's all and do the rt pcr by nasopharyngeal swab and oropharyngeal swab which is a viral nucleic acid where we detect the rna and some laboratory parameters suggestive of covid is lymphopenia and increased inflammatory markers like crp esr procalcitonin increased uh, cpk and sgot sgpt ldh and d dimer so some inflammatory markers and the cpk and the got sgpt ldh and d dimer may be increased imaging chest x ray remember to talk about bilateral ground glass opacities supportive care not much available just oxygen if too much distress only approved drug available at present is ramdesivir vaccination is also not approved for children so far and it's at present only for the 18 years of above only possible so vaccination also not possible and they may ask you maybe just one point if you are good enough you are talking lot of good so multi system inflammatory syndrome for covid which is similar to kawasaki disease where you have fever with inflammation with multi system involvement so fever will be there inflammatory markers will be there crp esr and ferritin will be elevated 
okay and multi system involvement so you can have rash you can have conjunctivitis you can have diarrhea okay but most important will be a history of uh, sars covid infection uh, recently within the four weeks at present the uh, the rt pcr will be negative but recently there will be a history of infection it could be either the child would have suffered with a covid or it could be a contact with a uh, strongly contact with a covid uh, household contact or at present the antibody may be positive so this is about covid 19 i think uh, i will stop with the uh, presentation so mainly in rs they will concentrate uh, especially the imnci so remember to read about the imnci criteria they will ask you a lot of clinical findings so, okay so they will ask you how will you say it as consolidation how will you say it as pleural effusion pneumothorax so the clinical interpretation they might ask you a lot of questions and the imnc criteria again okay thank you thank you ma sabir